So we're looking at vectors, uh, and there are three things we want to cover. First, I guess, is defining a vector, and a vector is something that has uh, both magnitude and direction. You might remember off Despicable Me, the, um, the criminal um, vector. Um, that's the first Despicable Me movie, and he says, I commit crime, uh, which has both direction and magnitude. Very cool. Anyway, uh, does a cool little dance and uh, piranha gun and squid gun and all of that rubbish. But anyway, um, so what does that mean for us? I'll give you an example of vectors. Um, something like uh, displacement. And you're probably thinking about water. But uh, the alternative, uh, let's just shuffle across a little bit. The alternative for displacement would be um, something called like distance. And... Uh, so displacement is a sort of a distance measurement, but distance is what we would call a scalar, and it does not have the direction part. Okay, so you might have 10 uh, meters as your distance, but your displacement might say uh, 10 meters from a particular point, um, or at a particular direction. And now this is where we get to the arrows. I'm going to come back to vectors in a little bit more detail too. We get to the arrows. Um, we represent a vector by drawing an arrow. So this arrow um, is now something that we can take an angle to give us a direction. And the length of the arrow would give us the magnitude. So um, that, that length indicates the magnitude. So you can have a short vector and a long vector. Uh, and if this was a scale diagram, um, then we would say that the length indicates that uh, this one is twice the length of the smaller one. Uh, so therefore the magnitude is twice the amount. Now, um, I think you're getting an idea of it. You've probably come across this in class or um, around and about textbooks. So um, what I'm going to do now is just give you a couple of examples um, to make this uh, drive home a little bit. So scalar is a quantity that doesn't have um, this idea of direction. Uh, so some things which are scalar quantities is temperature. Um, I guess depending on how you look at it, time could be a bit of a, a scalar. Um, it can go forward and back, but you can also have time as a vector. But Now maybe that's a bad example because we're getting beyond uh, what we really need to worry about. Um, so temperature is definitely something that doesn't have a direction. It might have a location but not a direction. Um, a vector can be a force because you're applying a force in a particular direction. Um, you can have uh, acceleration. Oops. Acceleration. Um, you can have a velocity, and now this is one of these ones that play into circular motion a little bit. The counter to velocity, in the same way that displacement has distance, the counter to velocity, the scalar version is just speed. So speed is something that has a particular amount, but not a particular di direction. So until you give it a direction, you don't know which um, way that speed is being, um, I guess, looked at or considered. Okay, so... Uh, what else have we got? Um, you'll come across more momentum. Momentum is, uh, yeah, momentum. Because momentum is mass times velocity, you've got that velocity component. Um, you could also, I guess, have momentum that is a vector if you use a speed uh, times the mass. Mass itself, again, is a quantity that doesn't have a direction just by the nature of it. Uh, although some uh, particle physicists might disagree on that, but... That's another story. Anyway, carrying on, trying to keep it relatively short. The last thing we need to worry about is resolving vectors. And um, the reason why we do resolving vectors, resolving vectors, first of all, is if you've got a vector, is breaking it down into horizontal and vertical components. Um, and so uh, this might be your, your main vector. Um, and you want to find out the vertical part of it. Could be a uh, rugby ball that's kicked. This is a projectile motion example. And that's the initial velocity. And you need to know um, what the horizontal velocity is that's not affected by gravity. So the horizontal initial velocity. And so you will use um, a bit of trigonometry to find out what that is. So a very quick example, um, if this was 10, if the angle was uh, 45 degrees, um, then the horizontal velocity uh, sine, uh, sorry, cos, because it's the adjacent side, cos um, 45 degrees equals adjacent over hypotenuse, which is the horizontal initial velocity over um, that 10. You rearrange to give 10 times cos 45, giving you that. Okay, so therefore this side here would be uh, 10 sine 45 degrees. 
Um, and uh, as I said before, why that's useful in projectile motion, for example, you don't need uh, to know like horizontal velocity is going to be constant because gravity is uh, not going to affect it. Uh, vertical velocity um, is going to change. It's going to be zero at the top and it's going to start off with um, whatever your starting figure is and it's going to be affected by the force due to gravity which will accelerate it um, in a downward direction. Okay, uh, I think that pretty much covers it. There'll be further videos about how to add vectors, how to subtract vectors, and um, maybe relative motion.